Today I'm going over Psalm 95, and as always, I pray the Holy Spirit gets this to the right person at the right time. Starting in verse 1, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Sometimes you're going to sense the Holy Spirit trying to draw you closer to God, and you might end up wanting to pray, but you don't know what to pray for. Sometimes God just wants to sit quietly, or God wants you to sit quietly with him in his presence. Like, imagine, like, imagine your grandparents. Healthy as they may be, they can't do what they used to because of their age. So sometimes they might ask you to come over, help them out, around the house, mow the lawn, in the garden, whatever the case may be. But sometimes they just want to sit quietly with you and just spend time with you. Sometimes that's how God is. Sometimes he just wants you to spend time with him, whatever that may look like. And another way, another thing that could that that could mean whenever you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you to God is that God wants you to listen to worship music and sing whatever it may look like. God knew what he was doing when he created music. It's the enemy, Satan, that has perverted it. And that's what Satan does for a living, pervert the gospel, pervert what God created. Verse 2, Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Thanksgiving is very important. An attitude of gratitude can make a humongous difference in your life and your walk with Christ. Verse 3, for the Lord is the great God, the only God spelled with a capital G, the one true living God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, and the flock under his care. I was a, Something came to mind, something Jesus said. I am the good shepherd, and my sheep know my voice. Whenever, sometimes the enemy will try to trick you into thinking that his voice is the voice of God. One way to test that is, is what that voice is saying lining up with scripture 100%. That's why we have to know scripture, because the enemy knows scripture, the demons know scripture, but the enemy takes out that one little percent and leaves 99%, so it sounds good, so it sounds biblical, but test the spirit and see if it lines up with scripture 100%, not 99 where was I? Today, if only you would hear his voice, verse 8, do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah, as you did that day at Massa in the wilderness, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these words right, where your ancestors tested me, they tried me, and though they, and though they had seen what I did, for 40 years I was angry with that generation, I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. Jesus Christ made a parable. He spoke of a parable. <clears throat> Excuse me. That parable I'm talking about is the sower and the seed. Jesus is going to, or rather, Jesus will spread that good seed, and the Holy Spirit working in and through us, we're going to spread that seed of the gospel throughout the world and to different people. And one thing that could end up happening is if you throw your good seed of the gospel out, out along the path, they'll get tramped on, trampled on, and the birds will eat them up. The part of that parable that stood out that came to mind was you can spread those seeds, but sometimes those seeds land on rocky soil They'll shoot up quickly, but they don't have good soil to grow roots in, so they wither up and die in the sun. Verse 11, So I declared 
on oath in my anger. They shall never enter my rest. See, God, God is a very gracious and merciful and loving and compassionate God, but he is a just God. Whenever we're going through difficult times, sometimes God is merely allowing the enemy to touch our lives, but sometimes, not all the time, sometimes when we go through difficult times, that is merely the consequences of our own actions.